seven plus square root of five. So that's the smallest known example? So yes, and for that we do have to work. So we are we can show, we were able to show that uh, for five letters and less, you always get integers. So this is a word of six letters. You can do it less than that. And this is the smallest group, which gives you a non-integer for this. So for, for seven, for case like two, seven, it's still it, Ah, uh, If you can get smaller groups? Yes. Yes, you can get. So this is a size uh, 660. It's not that I'm doing it in the headache <laughs> before I think it. And you can do a little less uh, with, with longer words. I think the nicest, with, uh, a nicer example, which is also a pretty simple word, is this word. This, this is this called angle word. Angle words is when you start with a commentator, but then you repeat one letter. And these words are very notorious, I think. Somehow they're very simple, but very little can be said about them. So for this word, you get a smaller group with none. Into the it was found using computer or by yes, yes. So uh, what, what's not by computer? Um, so Solomon in fifty one I think and I like here plus Stanley <coughs> showed that uh, for any word and any character this is an algebraic integer. So if you don't know what an algebraic integer is, never mind. <laughs> you won't get into it. But it does mean it, these, are, these are complex numbers which are solutions to uh, rational uh, polynomials with a maximum coefficient 1. So solution to something of the form x to the n plus some q1 x to the n minus 1 plus so solution to things like that with coefficient of the rational. And in particular, it means that it can never be a rational which is not an integer. So if the coefficient is, is rational, it means it's an integer. So this is a classic result that you can show directly from the definition. And, and what someone showed was not exactly this, but Stanley noticed that with a little, uh, a simple argument from that paper, you can show that these coefficients are in algebraic integers. So, for example, this is an algebraic integer. And I think it's pretty tempting to conjecture. I don't know if, if this is appeared somewhere in the literature, but I, I, I believe that for solvable or nilpotent g, the coefficients are always integer. So all the counting functions, for every word you take, the counting function is always uh, a virtual character. I don't. I, I, I think it should happen to nilpotent, and maybe even for solvable group. And my reason to believe this is only that when I try to find counter example, I keep for keep getting simple groups. So all the examples are PSL 211, PSL 35, they just simple group keep popping up and I try to look for a counter example. So only based of the, on this. So um, another thing which was shown, this is the uh, Amit in Vishne. This is uh, in 2011. This is the paper I talked about that and uh, what we thought we were the first to do. So they did several things there. And they showed that uh, if if whenever two elements generate the same subgroup, there exists an automorphism which takes one of them to the other. So this is the condition in a group in which two elements would generate the same subgroup. It means that they're uh, related by some automorphism. Then the Fourier coefficient are always an integer. So this they proved it, and they asked whether the converse holds. Whether this is, it, is if and only if. So now we have a. a 
counterexample. So this is something we did very recently, and this was also very much by computer. It's not that we have here an intelligent argument. It was really a gap, but it would take me two hours to show all the computations. But at the end, what we have is that, so what we basically show is that you take the group of a, B, 0, 1, in, and A is A in Z, P, star, and B is in Z, P. So, these are, so this is the, the subgroup of G, L, P. And this is a counterexample. It has, so we show that this happens here. So all the Fourier coefficients are integral. But at least for some of these groups, we have elements which generate the same subgroup and not related by automorphism. And this I thought about showing the proof, but it's very, just lots of computations of, of conjugacy classes and automorphisms. And at the end, you see that, OK, there's no, no automorphism taking them to one another. So this is also very computational. And I think, I think this is pretty much everything that is known about this. So this is very. Uh, I think gives you a lot of opportunity to play with this thing. Take your favorite group, your favorite word, and try to plug it in and see if you compute this uh, uh, counting function, Fourier co co coefficient, and see if you see something. Because I think everything here would be. So, so can you modify it and find out the specific coefficients to make it? No, we don't have anything like if and only. I, 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 I think uh, I, I have this bold. Yes, but it's not that I have any way of going there. I have <coughs> groups. So the simplest one I have is that I can't show this, which is nilpotent, is Z5, seven direct product with Z16. Now, Z5, seven direct product with Z4 is exactly what we have here. Z8, it's just the same argument holds, and then Z16 fails. And I don't know how to show that it holds, but I'm, I'm convinced that it can be such a simple example. So, very, I mean, this is very, very simple questions are open here. And, okay, what I wanted to. How many hours time do I have? Yeah, 10, 10 minutes? So, okay. Uh, so, should I prove something or tell more stories? Stop. Stories. Okay. <laughs> I thought about showing a group of, of guy here. I'm just saying what I thought about showing. Okay. It also uses a uh, Frobenius result, but it's much simpler than the uh, Porus conjecture. And he showed that every element in the derived group of G, so the elements which are product of commutator, is a product of a log for G commutator. So Oris conjecture says that you need only one. Is the same that I get from numbers the way? From Colombia? I think, yeah, yeah. I think, I think oh. from Colombia. He, he got interested in uh, characters as a result of looking at uh, L functions. Mm -hmm. So this is a really nice proof. I mean, I, a really nice paper, a very short one. And it's a very nice argument that only uses from the previous results. So, but you want stories. So and I'll tell you about uh, different stories and problems. So if now take an automorphism of the free group on the FR. This is the free group on R letters. So this is where our words uh, live. Ah, sorry. So this is F and if I have an automorphism of the third group, then uh, for any word, 
the counting function of the word and its image under an automorphism are the same. So it's a basic symmetry argument. You can you have an automorphism, so you can take the solution to this uh, word, apply the automorphism, and get the solution to that. And we know that we understand this group pretty well. So we generated by what's called Nielsen transformation, which are you can take some x i and x j and replace their names. So if you replace the name of x and y, of course you get the same thing. You can replace an element with its inverse. Just whenever you have x in the word, write x minus 1. It's also an automorphism of the free group. And the interesting guy here is just take uh, x i and change it to some x i x j, or some j different than i. So it means that you have some word, and whenever you have x, now write x y. And that's it. So this uh, transformation generates all the automorphism. And so now the question is the opposite way. So if for any G the counting function of two words are the same, is, uh, is there some automorphism out of G of the free group with which related word? <coughs> so this is a very good question. We're positive that the answer is yes, and we have no way, no idea how to go to go with it. What we do know is the following. We know one case. <coughs> we know what happened with single letter. So if I take nx, this is a constant function. Uh, this is the word having one letter, so I ask how many times I get the element G as a substitution in the word letter X, it's once, if I substitute this element. And we know how to show that if, and, uh, if uh, the number an element is obtained is constant, so you need constant because if you have a, a this is a bit uh, annoying, but if I look at x as a word in the free group on two elements, then the number of times I get each element is g, because I have I need to put g in x, and then I have g substitution to y. So for any con if it's constant, then uh, there exists some automorphism with We send this word to one letter, and this basically this is saying that um, there is a basis of the free group uh, containing W. It means that this is a word which can be completed to a basis. So this is what we know how to show. So this is. Uh, the one Fuder and myself from the uni fit in forward last year, but it will be printed this year, so we put 14. And what we will really show is the following if there is no, okay, so if W is not part any basis, then for some n, and even actually for every large enough n, 
take Sn, take the group G Sn, and look at chi to be, again, the character obtained by the action on all uh, vectors summing to zero. So this is how we got the, the last character there. So we take the character corresponding to the action of vector with sum to zero, and we know how to show that the coefficient of this character in of uh, the word is uh, strictly bigger than zero for all large enough n. And this means that this is that this is not it cannot be constant. Constant is only obtained for the trivial character. So this uh, this also spawns a lot of questions. So, for example, can you, what can you do with other groups? So we show that if the word is not primitive, I can detect this by the synergy group. And more than that, I can detect it by this special character. So can you show something about the Fourier coefficient of other characters? Can you show something about the Fourier coefficient of other groups? And the biggest question, can you say something about the general case, not only whether a word is equal, equivalent to a single letter or not? So these are the very big questions uh, in this field, but I think also simpler questions about rationality and about the, when, when can you say something about the specific uh, uh, word are interesting. So just to finish, I'll say what we get here. We get, uh, again, g. Now it's g squared over the dimension. And now we need to sum over all irreducible representation again. Take what is called, uh, this is usually called, uh, in general, in different uh, situations, it's called the klebsch jordan uh, numbers, or Littlewood-Richardson numbers, or Kronecker numbers for different groups, and divide. By, as I mentioned. So this this was what Amit and Vishnek first proved. So this is Amit Vishnek from 11, and, and together with Gili Shul, we found a different proof for something a little more general uh, in uh, uh, last year. So finding formula, finding rationality question, understanding of a computer type, lots of open questions. I hope that's someone interested in this. Thank you. Thank you very much.